So everyone, listen, I'm, I'm, re I'm really sorry about the wind noise, but at the minute, we're going to have to deal with it. So we are, I want to say we, me and Simon, we're down on Southbourne Beach in Dorset. Um, yeah, not long been back from Wales and I've already done another three and a half hour each way road trip, but Wales was an amazing trip, a good laugh with good mates, but the fishing was obviously terrible. Um, and I wanted to go and catch a Dover sole while I was over there, but I spoke to another mate, as I said on the last video, and it just weren't gonna happen. The tides are too small and it was pretty crap. So, we're down here at Southbourne, which is quite a well-known place for sole when they're about. Um, apparently there's, there's a few coming out. Um, so we've got a chance of sole, a chance of place, a chance of rays, a chance of bass, a chance of gurnard. There's even a very outside chance of a turbot. Um, they have been known to be caught here in the past. Knowing my luck, I'll probably get dogfish and white all night. But obviously the water's, it's not clear, especially not for this part of the country because normally it is crystal clear. But um, it's still quite, it's worth a quick walk down here in a way. Just, again, sorry for the wind, but yeah, just for now, we'll, um, we'll deal with it. Obviously there's a nice surf running, which is due to calm down a bit later. But even with this nice surf, the water is still pretty clear. When the sand particles drop back down, you can see it is pretty clear there still. So it's ideal. It is ideal. Um, here we are. It's, I, I am literally in love with Dorset, as most of you will know. I've been trying to move here for the last couple of years, but the missus won't leave mum and dad. Um, which is fair enough, I suppose, in a way. But for me, guys, we all know I travel a lot for my channel. And that is, there's, the, the big reason for that is, fishing where I live is barren but at the moment there are a few smooth hands still around but failing that that's it and trying to get them smooth hands with the weed is a nightmare and it won't happen it's just not worth fishing you might get a 15 minute window in the weed in the whole tide and by then it takes you 25 minutes half out of drive to go and get them what's the point what is the point um so uh, I've practically given up listen I'll still do the odd one obviously um but the, if I live somewhere where the fishing was better, the content, the videos I could make could be just so much better. I mean, an hour that way, you've got chisel. It's, it's probably not even an hour, really, but because you've got to go around the windy lanes and stuff. Um, you've got, oh, I've got the Isle of Wight just behind me, the Solent, where there's so many fish tote um, off the shore and, and all sorts of other species, the bream and everything. It would just make sense, but you know what it's like arguing with women. Um, so as it is, I've got to travel. Cost of fortune. And I hate leaving them overnight, but hate leaving family, well, the missus and the kids overnight, but it's one of them things. Um, I want the channel obviously to work and do well, and one day hopefully it'll be a full-time job, but until then, I've got to keep doing what I'm doing. But me and Simon have just had a lovely portion of chips and a bad sausage from, um, from actually a chip shop called Simon's Fish and Chips, which was quite funny. Um, and yeah, so tonight's tactics are scratching rigs basically for the sole. Um, and for all the other mini species. Very, very light gear, down to size six hooks, 10 pound snood lines, um, yeah, casting 20, 30 yards, um, and then one rod, which is still gonna be light, fishing for the rays, because I get uh, small lides, undulates, spotted here, um, which is still gonna be small looks. I normally fish with sort of like three or four O's for the rays back home, for the form backs, but down here they reckon one O's, small pieces of sand eel, small pieces of squid, sort of clipped and hit as hard as you can. Now, obviously my casting's not amazing, but I can hold my own. Um, I just hope that I can hit it far enough. And that's where you might pick up the odd turbot um, along with, with your ray bait. So I'm gonna get set up now. And once I'm all set up and I've got all my 15 rods out, I will bring you guys back. Um, I don't know, I've, am I expecting anything in this bright sunshine, people still swimming? Probably not. It'll probably be when the sun goes down a bit more um, it's probably when we'll start seeing a few fish. We're probably not going to fish that hard at the moment. Um, I will probably give it a bit more of a go when the tide, when the sun starts going down. But at the minute, it's still pretty high up in the sky. Anyway, I'll see you in a bit. As it's still daylight and very bright, I've just found a rig in my box that I think it must have come from one of Gav Manshaw rigs from when we went to Wales. Got really, really big pop-ups on it. See you go matching scratch hooks. Looks like a two at the loop rig, to be honest. Um, but with the big pop-ups on it, because I haven't actually got any in my box, um, I thought maybe this time of day with the sun shining and it's still hot, 
you might find, you might pick up a mackerel or something on the pop-up rig. Garfish maybe, some scad. Who knows, but we're gonna try the pop-ups because it's daylight, bright sunshine. There's no point, I don't think, in having these baits pinned right to the bottom. I think we're gonna fish pop-up conditions. Good chance of bass still. Swimming around in the surf maybe. Um, stick that on there. Look at that clip. So that clip there, this was on a reel that I bought actually. And I think that's a bloody good idea, you know? That's just a little carp thing. Never used them before, but I might start doing that because that's a great idea. So nice big long snoops. Oh, this is just a truck clip down. It's not a loop rig. Just a truck clip down. I'm probably not going to bother. Oh, I might clip it down just just to keep the bait a little bit. Um, um, what do you call it? Nice continental style lead, and that's what it's going to be today. It's going to be a little bit of continental style fishing, if you like. Something that I don't normally do. I normally go out targeting the bigger species, hounds, rays. Today we're smart targeting the smaller species, but hopefully we'll get quite a few of them and see some nice fish, hopefully. Um, so yeah, that's the rig basically. Um, and obviously one that's on the bottom, it's got movement because of the lead, because it's not a because it's not a fixed lead. These will obviously sort of float around if you like, with um, with ragworm on it, which we're gonna go and get off Simon now. So I'm gonna go and get, get the rag off Simon, cast out probably, I don't know if you can see the, the, the color change in the water. So you've got this greener looking color and you've got a darker color. So obviously the darker color is where it gets a bit deeper. Um, and I know there's a sandbank out here. It's about 30, 40 yards if, if I'm correcting what I'm saying. Um, Cause again, I'm no expert down these ways, but it's only what I've gone by what I've heard before. Well, let me get back in here. Um, and that's where you want to be hitting for the flatfish, for the soles and the, and the place and things. Um, and I say all the bigger species sit off the back of it. Um, so yeah, that's what we're going to give it a go. Right, I'm going to go and get baited up and I'll, um, I'll bring you back hopefully guys to a fish. I haven't seen a bite, but this is my, uh, I put a sand eel, small sand eel bait out, bit of squid, and I ate it as hard as I could. I haven't seen a bite and it doesn't feel like it's fighting, but it's heavier than what it should be. It could be weed, but just in case there's a fish there, I thought I'd turn the camera on and we could all have a look, see it coming out of the beautiful water. It feels heavy, you know. There is something there. I don't know what it is, but there's a fish. What is that, a bass? Oh, it's a gurnard, lovely. We'll take that first chuck, boys and girls, with a bit of weed, but there is a fish. On the sand hill, intended for a ray, or a turbot, or, or anything but a gurnard. Either way, we'll take that. What we say? We don't want all the weed that goes with it. I didn't see a bite, I was just checking. Look at that beautiful little dude. Oh. Look at the colours on that. The colours on that dolphin fin are such amazing fish. Look at that. Sandhill squid wrap, look. You can see that there. On a... Uh, just on a, uh, a 2-0 um, cut hook. Proper stunning fish. Proper stunning. It's quickly to put my rod back up when we get it back. Hang on. I'm fishing with three rods now and all because I'm being greedy because I want to look at the colours in that, looking at sun. Properly, properly stunning fish. I get quite a few of them down here, so uh, so the lads in the shop said. Look at that. Lovely fish. Sorry about the wind. I am sorry about the wind, but well, not a lot I can do about it. I've got holes in my way, I don't want to go too far. See that little dude? Gone. Oh, it was a big wave. Lovely. That'd do, in the daylight. Well, it does just prove that them fish are just that little bit further out. Because I've got to admit, I did clip that one and hit it as hard as I could to behind the, uh, behind the sandbank. As, well, I'm hoping I can hit behind the sandbank. But I've got to be honest, I'm looking at that thinking I'm going to be lazy, but that'll go again. Let's see if we can get two fish on it. All I'm doing is using the pulley dropper here. Another one of Gavman's to be fair, because I didn't have none made up. And true to fish hunter style, I didn't make any rigs before I came. I just changed, I just changed snoods and hook lengths and things. Ah! Oh, well, that bloody sandals now in my arm. Lovely. Oh, look at that, look. It's gone right in. Right, that's that. It may stay, 
players will stay with me and we'll we'll do a casting piece of video in, shall we? So that clips on there. Get off. Oh, like that is it? Because I'm on camera. It's going to be an ass. I had an inkling there was something there, but I couldn't feel nothing fighting back. Just felt like a bit of dead weight, but lovely. Clip down. Very, very streamlined bait. Tiny little bait. Six ounce lead on a gripper, which is probably far too much for here. But trying to, I'm just, I just put a bigger lead on just so I can punch through the wind. So we'll give it a bash. I mind that other line. I mind Simon's line. And there she goes. Stop. Nearly. Nearly. Splendid. Right. I put out. You saw the pop-up rig I put out on the first rod, on the big, on the big continental rod, if you like, light rod. And then on my new little bash rod that I picked up yesterday, just because well, I can, and it was cheap. I've got a boom rig which doesn't go very far because the reel I've got on it is too big. I need a smaller fixable reel to go on that with smaller line. To be fair, that's like 15, 18 pound line with a, with a shock leader on it that's far too long for the rod. So the shock leader gets wrapped around the rings, it's going out, it's not great. But I'm only fishing the bank like 20, well, I'm fishing probably about, I don't know, 30 yards, 35 yards with that. But it's a nice little rod, it's only a leader. I think that's what Steve's got, Maddie Man. He's got a pair of them, he uses them down the river all the time. And I see it and I thought, well, well, Steve's got some, so I suppose I'd better get one. And here I am. Tighten that up a bit. I've got to say, people, I don't know how many people have, I don't know how many of you have got these saltists or had these saltists, but all my life, since I've been using multipliers, it's so probably the last 10, 15 years, mate, well, yeah, probably 15 years. Um, I've been a five, an original 525 man, the original USA model, not the Mark IIs, the threes, or the fours. As my, I, I like the fours, they're all right, but they don't, for me, nothing has ever been a patch on the, on the originals. But these saltists, that one and the other one, I've got the black and gold one, with them mono mags, I, I, I love them, like, honestly, I love them. And to be fair, they've still got 20 pound line on them, from when we was tote fishing in Wales, which I need to take off. And if once I've got my 14, 16 pound line on there that I normally use, I think they'll be even better. I really, really do. Um, I really like them. But yeah, so three rods, sun's still obviously out. We've had, so in the groin we're in, me and Simon obviously in between the two groins, in this specific groin, when we got here, we were the only people here fishing. I can't see any other anglers all the way along this beach from, from all the way up to Southbourne, all the way back down to Bournemouth, and as far as I can see, down to Boscombe Pier. Right? A bloke walked up to Simon, excuse me, mate, do you mind if I swim here? And obviously Simon's, Simon's reply was, what the F do you think? Um, I think he said it in a polite way, but mate, really? Like, surely you don't actually mean what you just said. And then we had a couple of, um, then we had a couple of swimmers just turn up. But to be fair, we didn't mind them swimmers because they was a lot better to look at than this bloke. Um, yeah, a lot, lot better. It was almost a Kevin and Perry go. Kevin and Perry moment where we had to dig a hole in the sand. So yeah, we was quite happy for them to swim around. Um, but yeah, like really guys, use your initiative. Um, and so far what I've been doing is I've been sitting here like this. Hopefully you can see my wellies covered in sand. But if you pick up dry sand and you drop it on your wellies, what it does when the wind don't blow, it cleans all the wet sand off. So while I'm waiting for a bite, I've been pleasing myself. Because <laughs> I've got nine, no, got Steve here or Sam here to absolutely take the piss out of and Simon's unsociable and he's all the way over there. But it's so nice to be here. I absolutely love Dalt it. Absolutely love it. Anyway, I'm stop rabbiting on. I'll see you on the next fish. Everyone again. Because again I'm reading in the same rod with the bigger bait on. I say bigger bait. And it just feels heavier than what it should. Whether there's a fish here or not, no, I think it's weed. I think it's weed. It's weed. Right, well that rig is now coming off. And I'll show you. The rig that's going on. So that is mullard. Absolutely mullard. Let's get a bit more line off there. So that rig off. I'm 
dump that down there for a minute. Basically, this is just a longer, a longer pulley dropper. Again, with sand hill squid on it. It's a bit, it's a bit crooked actually. 220. I put a pen on it this time, so I've got two 20 cattos on there. Squid sand hill wrap. But this will just sit on the bottom. It'll be a bit longer. There'll be a bit more movement, which is kind of what I want. Oh, and the clip's missing off of it. Right, let's dig in the box of tricks. What can we find in the box? What can we find in the box? There's got to be one of the clips in there I want. Just mind your fingers because there's like trebles hanging about all over the gaff. There's got to be one. Oh, there's got to be one. All right, no, let's look in this box then. Let's look in this box then. Oh, no, there'll be one there. One of them what I want. It's one of them what I want. I'll pull a bit more of that off. I should really have a clip on this, so I can just change rigs, but I can't be asked. Quick half blood knot, whatever they're called. I don't really know what it's called, I think it's half blood knot. That clips on there, and then my proper pulley clips down on that. They're my favorite pulley beads, they are. Definitely my favorite. Good old breakaway. One day, Seagull will have some pulley beads. Mike. Hint, hint. Pull your finger out, son. But until they ain't. So that is how that'll fish up. See that sandal there? The lid will be in the ground like that, and the sandal will be that far away from it. You can see the sandal there. And then, and then it all clips up to your swivel. That clips to that. Slides down. The bottom of your sandal clips on the sim. Not like that, lovely, and there you go. Again, a nice streamlined bait, which is exactly what you need. And then, we oof it as far as we possibly can. Over that line that's being held down, but there's a lot of weed, it's a bit of a pain. She's still going. Donk. To be honest, <laughs> that wasn't that great, that one. It wasn't that great at all, but it'll do. It'll do. Guys, I am really sorry if there is too much wind on this video, but with the wind blowing, it's not a lot I can do about it. Oh, they're having a party over there. Loads and loads of kids. Loads of them. Sun's gone down to behind the cliffs now. I'm hoping this is now where it's going to start fishing. Right, let me just show you this little rig on here. Okay, this reel was took far, far too overgun for this little rod. Bloody weed on the line. If anything, this little rod's like a glorified carp rod. Oh, hold on. So I keep an eye on your rods, can you? I've either got weed here, guys, or I'm reeling Simon in. Or there's a fish. You never know. No, it's weed. Well, that's annoying, and I'm over Simon. That's even more annoying. Oh. Right, well. Oh, that's all right, it's only a little bit. Ouch! Sorted. Sorry, Treacle. Right, so this is the rig I'm using on this one. Little bar rig, again, that was from, um, Gav actually, Gav made me that for the uh, for the Dover sew up the uh, um, Bristol Channel. But I'll top that up with ragworm, stick that one back out. Again, this is fishing probably about to the end of the groins. It's big, big rafts of weed in the surf, which is bloody annoying. But it is what it is. It is what it is. Right, guys, so I'm going to leave you to it. I'll get this baited up, get it back out, and obviously I will bring you back when, if something happens. It's going off its absolute tits. Yeah, there's a fish there. Let's hope, let's hope I can actually reel it in. This is on the boom rig. Hopefully, it's a sole and not a bass. 
I really hope it's a soul and not a bass. Please be a soul and not a bass. Still kicking, still kicking. Now this is very close, this fish. This rod, very close in. Ah, oh, it's another Gurnard. Oh well, we'll take that. We'll take that, it's better than a dogfish and it's better than a whiting. Oh, sorry. And this one. Oh, look at them, look at the colors. Oh, it's amazing. Taking a hook. Ouch. They have got little spines on these. Not like a bass, but they have got little spines on them. Mate, sort your life out, little dude. Come on, let go. Come on. It's right there, the hook. Size of them fins. Got the hook. Literally, I've got the hook. Right. What I need to do, guys, is find my pliers. Right, well, look, there is another Gurnard. Another fish. Let's hope them soul turn up soon, eh? In a bit. Slack line on this, guys. Big slack line on the little rod. Whether it's still there or not, I don't know. Yeah, there's a fish here. Oh, I've got a rig. I'm not actually reeling it in at the minute, I'm just tightening up the line as I walk down. There is a bit of weed on the line on the surface. Just waiting to fill that bite. Come on. Give it a bit of movement, see if anything takes back. Yeah, there's fish. As soon as I tried to move that, it went. It had a little go back. There is quite a bit of weed here. Oh, I can't feel if there's a fish there now because I've got so much bloody weed on. I've got a feeling I may have lost this one, people. Is there a fish? Ah, oh, look at all that shit. Nah, dropped it. Ah! There was a fish, Sire. Si. Got way too much shock leader on this reel for this little rod. Way, way too much. Again, very, very close in on the boom rig. As I say, this rod is going, I don't know, 30 yards max. Sire, very close in. Simon doesn't grasp very close in because he's because he does a bit of tournament casting and he can bang a lead. I don't know. It's almost as if he feels he has to, which I totally understand. Because if I could cast a long way, I'd always be casting a long way. But, to be fair, this is why I've got a couple of rods out and an extra rod, this little one, because I've got one that I'm just sort of overhead thumping, if you like. One that, one that I'm really giving the beans, just to get that little bit of distance. And then this one, I'm just, well, open, really. Casting as, just giving it a gentle flick, trying not to break the ragworm off. Tiny little looks. Um, size six match and scratch sea glow hooks, obviously. Um, yeah, single rag. That should do. But honestly, guys, I'm 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 a little bit. I feel a little. I'm starting to get a little bit disheartened because I honestly thought there'd have been a few fish by now. But we still got a few hours left. Um, where's the head? We have still got a few hours left. So you never know. Well, right, listen, I'm going to finish baiting this up, get it cast out, 
and obviously when and if there's another bite I shall bring you back not the flatfish we're really after but I did say at the beginning of the video I'll take soul I'll take place done than place so far let's hope it um let's hope it gets better let's hope it gets better is that a bite on the little rod as well mm, don't know I'm hoping this camera's picking this up. I've got my head torch on my head and my GoPro on my head, and I don't know if it's working. Obviously, it's getting dark now. It's only a small place. It's a very sandy place too now. But, uh, what am I holding onto here? Yeah, GoPro. Hopefully, you can see it. A little bit of ragworm, he just spat out of his gob. Now, I changed my rig. So I had the pop-up rig on, didn't I? Now I've changed it to a, a one-up, one-down rig. Um, very long snoods, about 18 inches, and a little sea glow glow bead. If I just uh, finger that up, there we go. Look, the ragworm's been out there, it's still trying to bite me. Look at that, look. Still trying to bite me. Hopefully, you can see that. Right, let me cover up my head tool. No, I'll cover up the wrong one. Not bad. Let me cover up that right now. You can see how much that's glowing. Um, it's, it's incredible. Absolutely. I'm hoping the camera's picking it up. But yeah, it's incredible. The glow on them is brilliant. Um, and if it was charged up with a proper UV, that'd be cracking. Well, I'm going to get this place unhooked. I don't know what I'm playing with me. I talked to my camera. Um, get that back. Get this rig baited back up and get it back out. And hopefully, the next fish will be the sole that I'm after. In a bit. I lost that hook. Um, in that, I just weren't going to get it out without killing it. So I thought the best thing to do was snip it off, leave it in the fish and hope that the fish can dislodge it. It swam away nicely. Right, so these are the Sea Glow Silicon Attractors. I even had to buy these today from the tackle shop, Medway Tackle Supplies, because I couldn't, I didn't have time to get to Mike's to go and get some. Let me just show you how easy these are. I'm just gonna give it a little charge up in the old headlight. There's your hook. You tie your hook on as normal. Put it in your hook. I'm really hoping you can see this, guys, because it's dark and it does help if you've got a slightly bigger hook but that should work. You slide it over your hook, pull it over the knot. Now on small baits, that is pretty tight on there, so that's gonna act like a bait stop as well. Um, and then if you don't want it on, and you still wanna use the same rig, you literally can just take it back off. I'm not gonna, because it's a ball lake, and I'm trying to get fishing, because there's fish out there. Right, ragworm. Lovely rag, it helps with the sand as well, because you can pick them up nicely. So, this is all I'm doing. Match, match the worm to your hook. <laughs> Not happening. Ouch. Let's go. Now the problem with that is, that towel is going to come off in the cast, no matter what. No matter how hard or how, how finger you cast it, it's coming off and there's not a lot you can do about it. So this top hook, all I'll do is I'll add a smaller one. Like there's a smaller one. Again, leave a nice little bit dangling. It'll come off probably, but you never know. But these rag are the perfect size for Dover's, Dover sole and flatfish, and I ain't gonna leave a bit dangling, that'll do. Pull that little bead down, stop it from flying up the hook. Do the same on that one. And there you go. Chuck that back in with the ragworm. Salted. And literally just a gentle flick on that. Well, I'm gonna, I'm not gonna bother showing you casting because you can't see it anyway. It's dark out here and it's hard work. So, in a bit. Right, on the scratching rod, but the further out scratching rod, it's just literally doubled the rod. Two really big pull downs. Not a clue what it can be, but I need it to go a little bit more than just two big pull downs. Yeah, look, look there it goes. Got to be something there, isn't it? Let's give it a go, shall we? Just gonna see if it goes again. Now I've moved it a bit. Now this has only been out there a couple of minutes inside that place. Yeah, drop back. Yeah, something there, guys. Oh no, hold on. Do you know what that might be? There's a very good chance that might be a small smooth hound. Remember this is on size six hooks this. Whatever this is is on size six hooks. 
plenty of weed coming through. I reckon I might have dropped it. Oh no, it's on the top. What is that? Huh. Got it. I got my Dover sole. Get in. Simon, pull your finger out, dude. <laughs> what a result. I'm hoping you guys can pick this up on the camera. That is what we came for. They give an amazing bite. Right, an amazing bite. Size six hooks with the glow bead. Nicely up there. Tiny little looks. Get in. Look at that. Oh. Oh god, here we go. I only want to see how long it is. Let's go from the tail to the head. 29 centimetres, we'll take that. Let's get a cheeky little picture on the old phone. Lovely. Exactly what we came for. I am buzzing with that, people. Oh. Mm. I'm not buzzing, it's just flick sand in my eyes though. Oh, hang on. Guys, I'm gonna have to bring his back because I can't see anything. This one was even closer. Even closer, like 20 yards, 25 yards. It's got a bit of weed on it. I didn't even get a bite on that one, to be fair. If I, if I did, I didn't see it because I've had a bit of weed wrapped around the line. And of course, with the weed, it takes the, takes the, uh, the bite indication away. Come here, little fella. It's only small, but listen, we came here for soul. We caught a soul. Right, what more do you want? We've actually caught two soul. I've got to remember. I really do hope, guys, this footage has turned out all right with the uh, with the GoPro and the head torch because I think it's the first time I've done a night one with the GoPro and the head torch. These soul are so lively. Amazing flatfish, they are. It's going to be put it back. Hopefully, you'll be able to see it. Maybe you will, maybe. Oh, come here, dude. It's easier to hold when it's covered in sand, to be fair, anyway. The last one obviously went back all right, which you didn't see because it fuck. Oh. All right, that one's gone somewhere around my feet. But it's gone. They're hard as nails, them soles, to be fair. Right, bait up, and we will go again. We will go again. So, guys, remember one more thing. If you're visiting Southbourne to have a flatfish shoal session, whatever, and you're a really, really crap caster, you will be winning at life. If you're really good, like Simon, on the other hand, things won't be going so well for you because he's sitting over there still blanking, and I've still got a. Uh, oh my god. Oh my god, look at all these wag I've still got. I don't think I've touched them. Jesus. So, now what we've done for this trip is, knowing full well that these ragworm come from Paul Harbour, because they're dredged, ouch, and they're very much alive, I ordered these from the local tackle shop round here, which is a quite a well-known tackle shop, Christchurch Angling. Um, I rung them up the other day just to see what the crap was, what was catching. Um, very, that was very helpful for the, for the uh, it was a bit like Medway Tackle Supplies, really. If you ring up and ask what the, what's happening down the river, they, look, look, you get advice. Do you know what I mean? It's, sometimes it's um, good news, and sometimes it's not so good news. But I run everywhere I go, to be fair. No matter where I go in the country, I always ring a local tackle shop to see, what, to see what's going on. So I rung uh, Tom the other day at the tackle shop and asked what was happening. Um, and he said, do this, do that, do this, do that. You want nice small ragworm? I said, have you got any? Can I hold some? Yes. And me being me, thinking the ragworm weren't going to be this small, but they are absolutely ideal for what we're doing. I, um, I ordered a pound for me and a pound for Simon. Well, I ain't even scratched the surface on mine. And, and I've caught more fish than Simon. Well, I've caught all the fish, to be fair. So I'm probably going to be taking quite a lot of them home. Because I've only got about three hours fishing left. Because I've got to get up for work in the morning. I want to say work. I'm working in Medway Tackle Supplies tomorrow. And Saturday. Um, so yeah, as it is, I'm only going to get about two hours kit, but I'll have some bait for the weekend because I will be going somewhere, definitely, definitely, and all I'm doing with this is actually quite crazy really, this reel's broken, that's it, bay line doesn't work properly, 
literally a carp cast over my head. And that is it, just a gentle flip. And it's landed already, like, so, oh, it's so close, it's unbelievable. And that is where I've been getting the majority of the fish. All right, the bigger sole, the bigger sole that I had was closer, uh, was a little bit further out, but even still, like, it was well in casting range of anybody's capabilities. Anyone's capabilities, any rod or reel would do it. You don't need nothing special. Um, and it's so much more fun than catching white and dogfish, you know? So much more fun. Right, again, I'm gonna leave you to it because sitting here in the dark is hard work. Um, with the GoPro, but yeah. Fingers crossed for some more fish plate wool. Oh, hold on. Surely that ain't a bite already. Is that a bite on that little rod already? Nah, weed. All right, in a bit. If I can find the button. There it is. It's a bit on the scratching rod that's a little bit further out. Simon looks like he might be hauling something. It looked to me like he had a bit of a ray bite earlier. Is there a fish there, people? Oh, please let there be a fish. I don't know, I might have, I might have missed that. Give a good slack liner. Oh, maybe this ain't there. If it is, it's small, but... No, I don't think there is. I think I may have dropped this one. Rollocks. Go on, prove me wrong. No, I dropped it. Ah, give a bloody good bite though. I think now though, looking at my um, looking at my bait on these hooks, it may be time to get rid of all the old crap and just sort of freshen them up a bit. Obviously, I'm still getting bites, but where there's so many bits, obviously we're basically we're fishing for small species, and where there's so many bits hanging off here, there, and everywhere. And I'm only using tiny hooks. The fish are obviously not getting hooked, if you like, just because the baits are too big for the hooks. The hook point's masked, really doesn't help the situation. So yeah, look, it's just like a big ball of ragworm on there. So I think I'm gonna get rid of all that. Get rid of all that. And that dangly bit. And just put a nice fresh one on there. Nice chunky one. Chuck it in the don't like the sand, but it makes it so much easier to handle. So much easier. This is just that worm is absolutely ridiculous for this hook. Ouch! Look at them, look, it's got my finger. Hopefully you're seeing it. Yeah, no, this big ragworm. Too big for this little hook. Makes it hard work to put it on. Once you get it on, you can keep it sliding around, but... Right, just one single bit. I'm not going to bother leaving that bit on, because it's just far too big. What have we got on here? Let's get that dangly bit off. I'll leave a little bit of this on there, because it's not dangling. And I'll just put this towel on there. Now, ideally, you want to put a whole ragworm on fishing for sale. But with these little looks, it was just too big. It weren't going to happen. It's only going to come straight off in the cast. There's no point. So I've got a nice bit of towel on there. Once it's in the water, I'm sure it'll wriggle anyway. I'm tangled the rig, and that is that. Right, let's have a quick look at these other rods. The little rod's not slack. The big rod's not slack. Right, in a bit. Oh, Jesus, look at that wave. That was a rogue one. Bloody hell. Didn't expect that. Here comes another big one. That tight, that tight, Jesus Christ. That tide has left the beach pretty much. There's a couple of big waves coming in here, people. That's why you should never turn your back on the water. Even on a flat, sandy beach like this, you can still get a few rogue waves. And the, I, I, you can probably hear the wind's pretty much do, dropped now. The sea's flattened right, well, it's not flattened off, but it has flattened off quite a bit. Gentle flick, because that's where they are. This 
this is my sort of fishing, not having the cars too far. <sighs> right. So look, look where that tide is now. I was gonna say it's not coming nowhere near up here, but then what it is. Very strange. Right guys, in a bit. Guys, literally, no sooner have I just turned the camera off, my little rod has just, I've, well, I nearly lost it off the bloody, oh, Jesus. Look at that go, yes. Mate, that was fun. I don't know what it is, probably a schoolie, but I literally nearly lost it off the tripod. Jesus. Ah, oh, what is that? It's still on there. It was a bit breamy, actually. Or a bass, maybe, another gurner, I don't know. Let's just wait and see what it is when it gets here. I've been wrong all night. I reckon that's a bass. I don't want to lose it in that surf. Yeah, a little schoolie, look. For the bite that it gave, it had to be something small and silver. Three more bass. I'll get this one, on. Listen, oh, it's not been out there long either. So bass, bream, uh, sorry, bass, gurnard, place, and sole. And I really don't know why Simon's still blanking. I just don't get it. Come here, little fella. Tiny little looks again. Oh, and the scissors. There you go, mate. Let's go and get you back. What a bite that gave on that little rod. No wonder Steve's got them little rods. They're brilliant. See that, mate. Oh, right. We go again. In a bit. It's doing all right, don't by the looks of it. Feels all right. Yeah, but it's good fun on light rods. What have we got? Go on, be a soul. What we got? Oh, oh, Simon. Oh, mate. So that's a good fish, dude. Oh, I'm not, I don't want to grab it, but that is a good fish. Like a really good fish, especially for here. You can see it in the surf, guys. Look at that. That was worth waiting for, man. That is a good fish. Come on, Bass, be good, be good, be good, be good. Be good, be good. No waves, bugger off. This is really, really light gear, guys, and really, really small hooks. Look at it trying to go again, look. Go on, Si, it's on, it's on. Mate, look at that. <laughs> oh, no. Hook snapped. The hook has literally snapped, didn't it? No, it ain't the line snapped. How lucky was that? Simon, that, oh shit, I didn't want to do that. Uh, hook, 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 stick it in my jump, I don't want a dog to stand on it. You got any scales, sire? Well, guys, what a fish for Simon, mate. That's gotta be five or six pound, that. That's, that is a, it's a deep, deep fish. I really hope you guys are getting that. I'm gonna have to go and get my phone, get some decent pictures. Simon, Simon, Simon. This is where Simon goes. You can stick your soul in your place and you're going it up your ass. <laughs> oh mate, what a first fish of the night for Sire. Yes. Right, two seconds, I'm gonna go and get my phone. Oh, he just done us. And I'll tell you what, I'll grab my carrier bag and we'll just quickly wrap it up in the carrier bag. Two seconds, guys, two seconds. Oh, I'm running. It was very uncondensed, uh, unconfined, but we had to use a carrier bag to weigh it. Six pound four. Going back, I'm going to walk out in the water, treat the fish with as much respect as I possibly can, and hopefully she'll swim away nicely. I'm in a bit of depth here. Look at that in that water, look. Just incredible. Woo! Get a bit of water for our gills, his gills. I need to get a bit deeper if I'm honest. 
Come on, girl. You can go. You can. Here she goes. Bit deeper, bit deeper, bit deeper. That's a big wave. Go. Woo. That was bigger than I thought. Go on, swim. It'll go. It will go. Shit, please pull me over. It'll go. Gone. Get in. <laughs> yes, sir. That will do. I've still got your hook, mate. Shoved in my jumper because I didn't want a dog to tread on it. Oh, okay. So, yeah, you can tie that back on. How lucky was that? Only on eight pound snoots. Eight pound snoots? Yeah. Ah, still stuck in my finger. Oh, mate. What a fish. We did not expect that. I'll use my uh, good old plastic bag. Well done, mate. Can I have one now? Oh, I keep, there's a bloody lump in that beach and I keep falling over it. I'm buzzing, Pesai. Like, honestly, I am made up with that fish. What a result. Right, chuck my carry bag in here. I'm a rod's all slack. My big rod's a bit slack. Tighten up on that. Tighten up on that. Tighten up on that. What a fish. Buzzing. Right, guys. In a bit. Right, guys. My little rod's going mad. I ain't got my GoPro on, so I was just watching the footage of that. Sorry, I'm just going to chuck it on my head. Just watching the footage back of that bass. Oh, I'm still buzzing for Simon. I really am. Really buzzing for him. What a fish. Don't get me wrong. I, I would have loved to have caught that. Although I am here for soul, I'm still not going to turn down those six, pound, six and a half pound bass. So massive well done. I'm still very glad I've caught my soul though, to be fair. Very glad indeed. This is, yeah, look at that go. Probably another little schooly the way that's biting. I wanna, oh, no, that one's just gone slack. Brilliant, that's all I need. This, whatever this is, don't feel too bad. Well, it didn't feel too bad. It's a bass, isn't it? <laughs> it didn't feel too bad. Look at it. Dinky little thing. Well, look, I'm just going to get this one hooked and get it back. But my big, my other scratching rod has just gone really, really slack. So that could mean anything, guys. I'll bring it back. Right, what a hectic night this is turning into. This rod keeps dropping back slacks, so there must be a fish on that. I'm desperately trying to get this rod baited back up after that little bass so I can get that out. It's just turned absolutely mental. And I know there's going to be a hell of a lot of footage on this video, but it's tough, you're going to have to watch it. <laughs> Guys, I do say it a lot, but I'm going to say it again. I really, really do appreciate everybody's support on all the videos. Um, like it really really means a lot to think that there's that many people watching um, that many subscribers and it's still mad to think 15,000 people have subscribed to me I'll tell you what is mad tonight when I've been sitting here waiting for bites and stuff I don't know if there's anybody that has heard of a YouTuber called Mr Beast he's just hit a hundred million subscribers tonight and while he was live he had a live count up he hit a hundred million and by the time he'd finished the end of his live, another 90 minutes later, he, he managed to rack up another... Oh, look at that go! He managed to rack up another 100,000. So he was on 100 million, 100,000 subscribers, which is crazy. One day, you know? One day. Let's see what this fish is, because that was a bloody good bite. Probably another schoolie. I'm hoping that there's not too many schoolies about because I don't really want to be catching schoolies all night. I want big bass, or sole, or place. I just don't want loads of schoolies. Whatever this is feels a little bit better than that little schoolie, but it might just be fighting well. It might just be fighting very well. What is that? Is that an eel? Oh, that's even worse. I definitely don't want that. Ugh. No, don't you dare mull at my rig. Oh, it's too late, look. It's knackered it, look. Absolutely wrecked it. What is that? That's a little strap conger and all. Bloody hell. Right, people. In a bit. In here talking. 
mean, he's just had a really good bite on his little rod. That bass, he's just been saying, he cast that close to catch that bass, he heard it splash. So that just goes to show what a bloody good fish it was too. No, nothing. Oh well. It's like Simon's just wielding a soul. He had a bite and as I looked over to my rod, it dropped right back slack. So I've come running over, but I literally tightened up to it. I felt the fish. I started reeling in and now, now I'm not sure if it's bloody there or not. Oh, it could be. I don't know what it's going to be, but Simon had his soul, which is brilliant. Because now, we, well, the main reason we came here tonight, guys, was for soul, if I'm honest. We both had one, so it's right little touch, really. What is that? If that's a white and I'm going home. Oh, no, it's not. That is a double shot of bass. Brilliant. You still got it, sire? Oh, I got a double shot of bass. I thought the top one was a white and I said, if it's a white and I'm going home. Oh, well, happy days, people. Still plenty of fish about. I've, um, we've had quite a few fish now. Um, lovely, lovely little creatures, aren't they? Right, I'll get these unhooked, get them back, and well, we'll go again in a bit. That I'll put out with sand hill squid on. Hasn't done anything all night. Not a sausage. So I reeled in earlier, and I've put about five or six of them ragworm on it. And I'm now getting a bite. I think it's another schoolie, um, just because it's a, it's, a, it's a real rattly bite. Whether it's still there or not, I don't know. So what we'll do, give the line a bit of a tug. Tug the line, and see if the fish will tug back. And no. Oh, oh, look at that little one go. Look at that go. Slack line. Lovely. <laughs> That's crazy. Are you still there, Mr. Fish? Wherever you were. Keep an eye on the other ones. Yeah, it's there. Oh, I think it's there. I hope it's there now. Bloody hell. Probably be another schoolie. These bass are getting like whiting. As long as it ain't enough one of them eels, I don't care. Because that conga was a right pain. Oh no, I might have dropped this fish. Have I dropped this fish? Is it weed? Oh, bloody hell. That was definitely there. What's happening with this other rod? Are we getting a bite here? Are we? What's the bait lock on this quickly? Oh, do you know what? I said I hope it ain't another eel. Is that, is that eel slime or is that weed? Oh no, that's weed. Well, that bottom bait's fine. The top bait's not all that great, but that is fine to go out again, and what I'll do is I'll reel that big one in there. To be honest, I'm going to put it away, guys, because time's getting on. I've got to get up for work in the morning, and I've still got a three-hour drive home. It's about midnight, so if I get if I get three hours kipped tonight, I'll be happy. And I think the shop's open until five tomorrow, which is a Oh no, it's not, it's Friday, it's half past five. Oh, that's even worse. Things we do, eh? Things we do. Right, let's just bring this bigger rod in, see if there's anything on it. Like I say, it's staying in now anyway. Fish or no fish. Yeah, it might be sank there. Problem with this one is where it's got a grip lid on it and I'm casting to the other side of the bank because obviously the bank's not that far out. 
when you reel the rod in and it hits the bank, you're then reeling up the bank and over it with your six ounce lead or whatever lead you're using. And it makes, a, it, makes it feel a lot heavier than what it actually is. Just because you're dragging through a big sandbank. Like at the minute, this feels like a bloody good fish. If it is a fish and not weed. I don't know. I don't know. Just double check, keep double checking Simon's rods that I ain't reading him in. Well, I'm on my shock leader. Is it weed? That's weed, isn't it? Yeah, look, which is a massive, massive pain in the ass. Weed and bare hooks. Right, that is that. I've reeled in too many times now with just weed and made myself look like a right tit. I know I don't need much help in doing that, but. Oh, hold on, what's going on here? Has that gone slack? I think it has. Big rod's gone, oh, well slack. Let's tighten it up, see what happens. Oh yeah, look, look at that go. Hopefully you guys can see that. Right, let's reel this one in. Jesus, this is gonna be a long video. Right, there's definitely a fish here because I can feel it pulling back. Although I don't think it's very big, there is a fish here. Probably another schoolie. I was really hoping to get another soul, to be honest. Oh, you beauty! Ask and you shall receive, people. Ask and you shall receive. What a result. Do you know what? These little, they're only little soul. I know, and I know there's people at home going, oh, what's that thing he's getting all excited over? Because I know some of you boys fish the Bristol Channel and you're spoilt with your big soul. But, listen, I live in Kent and there's nothing in Kent apart from white and dogfish. Like, it's just crap. 90% of the time, apart from when a few smooth hands come in. So for me to come down here and catch a few different species is amazing, I love it. And actually come down and catch the target fish, what you wanted is just, yeah, brilliant. Right, I'm going to go and get this one unhooked because it might be a bit of a pain. And some of you might not like it, so I'll get it unhooked. And uh, the big rod's going away. I'll stick this one back out though, in a bit. Taking the rig off the big rod. And while I'm doing it, the little, little rod's going crazy again. Oh, saying that, now I've put the camera on. And Simon the Jonah's turned up. <laughs> He seems to have stopped. Go on, little dude, go again, please. Come on. That my big rod side, a few bites, okay. and it came back completely stripped. Yeah, my, my with own. with a load of weed. And that's another thing, people. Look, this weed that we're reading in, this really long stuff, it looks like Bob Marley's dreadlocks. It's actually still got the stones attached to it that it grows on, which why it makes it feel so much heavier. Well, look at them, look. See, if you had a little bit less air, they'd be wicked extensions. And this, look, this bundle here. I mean, that is like Mount Kilimanjaro attached to the bottom of that. How much of it is? Loads of stones. Well, anyway, little rod. Little rod. No. Bring you back. It, the fish is on there. I just thought I'd see if I can get a, a bit of a bite for the camera because I keep seeing all these slacks. Come on, fish. Are you there? I don't know if it's there, Sire, now. Go 
No. Oh yeah. I'll put it back down then. Finishing on a sole. Now, I say finishing, we are finishing. The problem I've got is, and it is quite a big problem in my eyes, I've got a hell of a lot of worms left. The fish are still biting, but it's nearly one o'clock in the morning. I've got to go to work in seven hours, and I've still got a three hour drive home. So, as much as it's really crap having to go, now I need to. But, 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 I am coming back next week 100%. I'm not going to get as much bait because me and Simon ordered a pound each. And I, I, when, I, when you see how much bait we've both got left, it's ridiculous. I've got enough for another two sessions. But if them fish would have been biting for the first, we sat here probably for three or four hours. I had them a couple of gurnard, and that was about it. Um, come on, little look. Out you come. Um, if them fish were biting then, the way they are now, we probably wouldn't have the bait left, you know? I've got the hook, guys. I'm just... There he goes. There he goes. Stunning little creatures. Do you know what? Put a bit of sand on him, and you can carry him. That ain't so slippery. Um, yeah, we probably... Oh, I don't know. It's obviously the tide's ebbing now. Look, I'm over a few stones. The water's cleared right out, the wind's dropped, it's gone beautiful. I say the water's cleared right out. Go on, little fella. Ah, oh, he's gone, you can't even see him. Hard as nails. Um, yeah, I think I'll be coming back next week down here, definitely. Oh, this is, a, as I've said, I love bullshit. And, and having a few, having loads of bites, light gear, bending the rod. Sometimes it's not always about catching the big fish, you know? Sometimes it's just about having a bit of fun. And I mean, oh, Simon had that big bass, which was, well, it was incredible, really. Really, really was incredible. But chances of that happening again if we come down here next week are very slim. But I don't care. I'm doing it. I'm doing it. I'm doing it. I'm doing it. Um, I will say one thing to the people with Dulcet. Congratulations. The beach down here is incredibly clean. Now, I know they like to try and keep this area up. Well, I, haven't, I haven't seen a bit of rubbish, seen a bit of plastic, not even anything washing up on the beach, to be fair. So well done, guys, and I have been looking. Um, I have heard a bit of bad news tonight. There's been some sort of oil spillage in the channel, about 10, 12 miles off of Deal or something, um, which uh, getting a bit worried about. They reckon it could hit the coast sometime in the middle of the night, which in a not so funny way, it ain't gonna affect the fishing because there's no bloody fish there anyway. But it's the wildlife and the environment and it's not really a joke to be fair. Um, so I'm gonna have a little look into that tomorrow and see, see if there's anything we can do. I'm sure the lads will be happy to come and go down there and volunteer and help have a clean up. If there's anything any of us can do to help out the wildlife, the beaches, whatever it may be. Um, but listen, even if it's dog fishing, we all know how much I hate dog fish. Um, it, yeah, like these things you don't need. It's no good. Like say that the, the coastline down our way, round our way, is bad enough as it is, and we don't need it to be any worse. So, what you got? A hound. A hound? Oh, Simon's got a little baby smooth, and that's another species. That's like seven species we've had tonight. That's amazing. Look, and we're going. I'm well annoyed with myself. We're going, but like I say, I need to. Um, so yeah, so like I say, if there's anything we can, I'm gonna like I say, I'll look into it over, when, I, when I get home in the morning, well, when I get home in a few hours, see if there's anything, and if there's anything we can get down there and help out with tomorrow, then I'm sure the boys won't mind jumping in the van and going to help out whoever we can help out and however we can help out. Because uh, at the end of the day, it's our home and you've got to look after it, ain't you? You have got to look after it. All right, let's get this monstrosity back in there. Everybody loves a clean tackle box, don't they? Beautiful. Hang on, let's go have a look at his, uh, his hound. Come on, mate, you be careful with your fingers. <laughs> Little baby. Oh, it is definitely an hound. I thought that, 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 that towel looked a bit long. It could have been a tote, but it's not. It's an hound. Beauty. Happy days. Well done, Sight. So, guys, again, thank you for watching. It's been a very long video, I think. I haven't looked at the footage, but I'm pretty certain there's quite a bit of it. Um, please do comment if you've managed to stay till the end. 
and I don't mean the people that have flicked through it and just got to the end and blagged it. Um, please subscribe if you can, it'd be lovely. Like really, really lovely if you can. We're on the road to 20K. Um, really helps me out. Yeah, not really what else I can say guys, apart from thank you very much again for your support. I hope you've enjoyed the video and I shall see you on the next one.